Well, what's up? Yo, yo, yo. Welcome. It's your boy, Lawrence Sanders Jr. And I want to welcome you to the premiere episode of We the People, Be the People here on the TFG Network. I hope y'all are doing well tonight. If you're driving home, be safe. Keep your hands and eyes on the road. But for those who are here, thank you for joining me. I'm super excited to be here and have this opportunity to just talk to y'all about us being the people. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what is be the people? And I'm glad you asked. That's a really good question. Be the people came from this idea that we have an obligation as people, as a race, not just black people, white people, Hispanic, those who are Americans. We have a task and a call to be the change that we want to see. It's a call to action. We have to be the people. We talk about, you know, we the people to form a more perfect union, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, that's paperwork, right? That's 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 jargon. Those are words on a page. But how significant can word on a page words on a page be once we begin to enact those those actions? Yo, Brenton, what's up, man? Uh, thank you for joining me. We are here on Be the People, where we are here to give information. We are not just political, but we're going to talk about some political stuff. We are in the election season, and we have a lot going on from the president to the Supreme Court. But this episode, I wanted to talk about what is the purpose of Be the People? Why, why are we here? What was the whole purpose and idea of this episode? So one of the first things is political enlightenment. Right. And so what that means is we want to bring awareness to what's going on around us. Um, Malcolm X said something. And I, I love I love reading Malcolm X. I love hearing his ideology. But he said education is our passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to people who prepare today. And if we take a look around, a lot of things that we miss or the reason why we don't see the change we want to see in a part of being people is we have to be aware of what's going on. Uh, people perish for the lack of knowledge, you know, and as as we continue to maneuver through this politically charged and dangerous climate, um, there are a lot of things that we have to be aware of. There are a lot of things that we don't know. There are a lot of things that are happening around us because of our ignorance. I mean, let's be real. Like, let's be honest about it. Let's talk about it because we don't know and we're not aware of what's going on. We miss out on a lot. And a lot of things are happening. A lot of things are passing us by and we become the victim of a lot of things that are happening around us simply because we're not aware. So one of the primary focuses and platforms for be the people as we are being the people, we have to be aware of what's going on. When we become aware, it stops people from taking advantage of us. We are no longer in a place to just accept what, what people present to us because we are aware and we know. And so as we go through these next few weeks, as we um, go through each episode, we will talk about some of the things that are happening to help us be aware. We'll talk about a lot of the things that maybe you learned in your political education course, or maybe you learned in elementary school, or maybe things that are happening now that you hear terms, but you don't necessarily know what it means. Like, what is parliamentary procedure? Like, what does that have to do with anything? We're going to talk about voting. Like, where did voting come from? What is the significance of voting? Why, why do we vote? Who are we voting for? How powerful is the vote? All the things that we have to be politically aware about. We have to know what the powers that be are doing. What are they thinking? What does the political climate look like? Those are all the things that come through um, being alert and being aware. And so one of the, the primary focuses of be the people, a part of us being the people is that we have to be aware. We have to know what's going on. When we know what's going on, no one can take advantage of us. We're, we're, we're no longer a victim because we are aware as well as alert. All right. So the second thing that we have going on um, when it comes to be the people is political engagement all right political engagement that's what we're doing next political engagement and po political engagement is now once we know 
what's going on around us. So uh, awareness is more like us being on the educational side, knowing how it works, what it does, right? The significance of it. Then we get to engagement. This is when we put the boots on the ground based on what we know, right? Based on the, the, the ideologies, based on the information that we have, based on once we're vetting people in the voting process. Now that we have an awareness, we have an alertness, we know what's going on. Now there's a call to political engagement. And what that means is that as we talk about be the people, it's a call to action. No longer can we just have information and just sit on it. We have a lot of smart people in the world. Yet at the same time, we miss opportunities because we don't act. Do you realize how the last election could have changed simply because there were a lot of people who just didn't vote? There were people who did not act. Hey, Kendrick, what's going on? Thanks for joining me, bro. Um, So as being the people, a part of being the people is we have a call to action. Not only do we just have information, but with this information, we have to act and we have to respond. But in our responses and in our actions, we have to be very strategic and how we respond and how we act. So this is why awareness, political enlightenment is just as important as engagement. Because once we know what's happening, now we have to act on what we know. And as a culture, um, that kind of seems to be something that we struggle with um, when it comes to action. We act when things get very, very, very bad. When we look at the climate of you know what's going on in the world right now, especially with with George Floyd, like it just got to a point like now we got to act. But just think if we were proactive instead of reactive. You know, what if we were more reactive instead of being in radioactive situations? And what I mean by that, there are three there are three types of responses to situations. You have proactive, reactive and radioactive. Proactive is mean that we're thinking ahead of the curve. We're thinking we're, we're, we're able to see and look out of what's going on. And then we're doing things ahead of things happening. Reactive is, okay, now we get in a situation and we're reacting to something that's already happened. We're not necessarily prepared or we're slightly prepared, but either way, we're reacting to something that's happened. And then we get to the situation like George Floyd and everything is just radioactive. As soon as it happened, boom, everything blew up. So a part of political engagement is our call to action and being proactive. And that comes from, again, our awareness of what's going on. Who are we voting for? You know, what, what is the climate around us? Yeah, we're Democratic, but who's on the Democratic ticket? Like, do they believe what I believe? Do they have my best interest in mind? And if they do, now the call to action, the engagement part is I'm going to go to the polls and I'm going to cast my vote for that person. So political engagement is the part that we have to play in all of this. Please remember, we all have a part to play in all of this. As much as we have our opinions, as much as we have our ideologies, as much as we have our point of views, please know we all have a part to play in all of this. Um, James Baldwin says, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. And that's the action part. We can't cower because of, you know, what our mom said or how, you know, people before us voted. We have a responsibility in this thing because a lot of people paid a very high price for us to have the, the ability to even be in, involved politically. A lot of people died. A lot of people struggle. A lot of people suffer to give us the I, the simple ideology that we have, let alone the ability to actually go to the polls and vote. I think people take advantage or don't realize how valuable the vote is, especially based on what people had to pay in order for us to be able to do that. So now, with that being said, it is imperative that our political engagement, our call to action, the part that we have to play, we have to see that as, as important because our voice matters. That is a part of being the people. And our call and our call to action of being the people, we have to be engaged. It's all about us being engaged. We have a part to play. Yo, Aaron, what's up, man? Thanks for joining me. All right, so next, when we are enlightened 
and we when we are engaged, something that becomes of this is a political evolution. That's what happens. Because we have information. And information is such a dangerous weapon. It's, it's, it's such a dangerous weapon. And if we go back to even back in, in slavery times, it was a crime for black people to know how to read. And then it, the, the saying would come, if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in a book. Right? Because our ability to know, right? Because it, once we know and we have information that changes our thought process. I mean, even knowing certain information, it, it, it can even bring hope, you know, because of what we don't know, we find ourselves in certain places where it's kind of like, uh, but it's like, wait, we can do what? Huh? Are you serious? It's like, yeah, bro. Oh man, I ain't even know. Now that we have this information, we're armed. Yo, it's a call to action. And once we act, now evolution happens. And that's where we're trying to get to now. A part of being the people is we are trying to get to a part of political evolution. Yes, we have rights, but we want more of a voice. And that's what we don't have. You know, we have we have influence to an extent. We have influence to a degree. But yet political evolution not only drives for for freedom, but we have like equality across the board. There are just as many seats for black as for white as for everybody else. And so as a part of being the people is that, yo, Trees, what's up? Everyone's biggest thing is my vote does count. It does. It does. And the biggest thing for us is the more that we use our awareness, the more that we use our actions, political evolution comes. That's just how the system is set up. When we act, it's holding people accountable because we know what the law says, right? Like we know how this thing works, but we fail as, as a culture, we fail as a people is because we're trying to do something. We don't know how the game is played. We are trying to change all the rules, but we don't know how the system is set up. And so political evolution is only going to come by our awareness and what we know and how we respond to what it is that we know. It's that simple. If we want change in, in our communities, if we want change in our neighborhoods, like if if we want change, it comes from what we know and how we respond. It's not about us venting on Facebook and on Instagram and on YouTube. Like, that's cool. But if we want change, we have to know how the game is played. And so that's what Be The People is about. We're, we're trying to reach awareness. We're here for the education, the enlightenment of people around us. And then ultimately, we are about the, the, the evolution of our environment. Because our environment will not change until we arm ourselves with knowledge. And then we put that knowledge into action. Like, and it starts with our household. It's like, well, Will, how does this work? Like, how, how are we supposed to change it? How does information in the Well, you have to know, like, it starts with our household. And then from the household to the community, from the community to the block to the city, to the state, to the nation. That's how this works. You, you, you're not going to wake up and then things are just going to be cool and okay. No, like there's work that has to be done. And although you may not be out protesting, that's cool. You know, or, you know, you, you may not be in a place of influence, but everybody has a simple tool that we can use. And that's our, that's our brain, our knowledge and information. That's right. Proactiveness is definitely power. We don't want to be reactive. I feel like too long as a culture, we have been radioactive and we have been reactive. There has to be a point in time where we as a culture, as a people, we stop and say, yo, this is what we want. This is what we're trying to accomplish. And instead of allowing things to happen to us, we begin to do things for ourselves. We begin to mobilize the communities. We begin to mobilize the leaders. It becomes up to us to put these things together. We can't, we can't expect Washington to do it. Because if they were going to do it, it would have happened by now, right? I mean, we've had Republican and both Democratic presidents, and the hood still looks the same. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. So, ultimately, we have a call to see the evolution that we want to see. It's up to us. I heard Killer Mike say this. It's like, we need to come up with an agenda, 
after we have our agenda, we need to find somebody. We need to vet people that we can put our agenda with, that we can put our vote with, and we can send them to the House and to the Senate, you know, to, to, to Congress and all, and all these places, ultimately even the White House. But we will not see political evolution until we get to a place where we are cognizant and we are aware of what's going on around us. And I don't want to keep going back to awareness, but I feel like it's just, it's such a big thing because we can be so ignorant sometimes. We can be so ignorant, ignorant to a point to where it handicaps us. And then we get comfortable in our ignorance, like it has nothing to do with me. But wait, your voice matters. Your voice matters. Who you are and the power that you have in your mind, in your vote, it matters. And that's something that we're going to get into. That's something that we're going to talk about when it comes to, to, to be the people. Again, this, this is a call. This is not just a real cool, you know, fancy podcast show on the internet, although it is dope. Like, don't get me wrong. But ultimately, we have to mobilize and we have to begin to arm ourselves with, with knowledge, with information. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about it. Like, what is the House? What, what, is, what is the Senate? What is the voting pro progress? Right. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is ugly. Some of y'all can't afford to be ugly. Just pick the struggle. So anyways, but be the people again. This episode wasn't organized. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's and, it, and it's and it's worked for, for, for years. Organized, mobilized and strategized. It, it's worked in the past, but somehow we've gotten we've gotten away from it. We, we've gotten away from that ideology. It's like, yo, let's get together. Let's put boots on the ground and let's make it happen. It, it, it works. And so that's what Be The People is here for. We are here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and we're going to work our way down. We are going to talk about what is voting? Like, what is what does voting have to do with with anything? What What is how do we come about it? What is the House? What is the Senate? What is the Electoral College? Uh, which is something that we're going to talk about a little later. Um towards the end because this is some stuff that happened with the electoral college here recently but we're going to go through a lot of things to help us know and to understand how we can see the change that we need in our communities there's so much change that is needed in our communities so much change that is needed hey walter what's up man so much change but we are expecting I had a conversation with a with a guy um, a couple weeks back, and it's like I made the statement is that there are people who are in control of our communities. They don't have any interest in the people that are there. And that's a problem. That that is a issue. Yes. And, and, and Brittany, yes, that is exactly right. We have to learn the system. We have to learn the system. We, we are wanting change. Yes. Right. Writing and protesting. It, it has its place. But after the rioting and protesting happens, like there has to be something else. There has to be a something that comes after that, because that's not the end all be all. And be the people is here for just that. We are we are going to talk about what does the system look like? Who invented the system? Who are the players in the system? Um, how old is the system? How has the, ben the system benefited people of color and minorities? What are the ideologies of the different parties? Right. How, how are people um, elected? How are people put, you know, in position? How long do they stay in position? A lot of the stuff that we, we don't know. We don't know that we can vote some of these people out. We don't know that certain people had something to do with certain like processes. You know what I'm saying? Like, what did the senator have to do with any of this? Oh, well, he had a lot to do with it. And you can vote him out. Again, that is the power of the vote. So be the people in, in short, it's just a platform for us to figure out where it is that we are as a people, figure out what it is that we need based on our understanding of how the system works. Again, 
we fail so much. Like we fail often is because we don't know how it works. And so I had the the idea. Shout out to Brenton, who um who kind of pushed me into it. Had this idea of basically educating people on for like the amendments, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. Like it's so much, so many things that as we see these world events happening, we have no idea if it's constitutional, unconstitutional. We just saw a man die. Like, what do the laws say? That, that is something that we're going to get into. That's something that we're going to talk about. Because again, we have to arm ourselves with information. And I don't know how many times I can say it. I'm saying it till I'm blue in the face, but we have to bring awareness to our culture. We have to bring awareness to our culture because we there are so many people who are wandering aimlessly with ideology and opinions and perspectives that they just not aware. They they don't they don't know what's happening. They don't know what's going on. So first one is political enlightenment. Second one is political engagement. And then ultimately that will lead to political evolution. That that is what we're shooting for. That is the goal. That is the aim of be the people. Again, be the people is just that. We have a call to be, which means that is a call to action. We got to act, y'all. We, 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 we have to act. There, there is a call because our, our lives depend on it. Our kids' lives depend on it. Their kids' kids' lives depend on it. And so it can start with us. It, it can definitely... Um, Start with us. So every day during the show, I always want to do something and talk about um, something that was happening, something that was popping in the news, you know, more recently when it comes to um, the government. And there was something that happened recently um, in the courts. And it was just kind of like, hmm, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, um. For those who don't know or those who didn't know, there was um, something that, that popped off in the Supreme Court concerning the, uh, the popular vote in the Electoral College. So as we know, um, especially from this last election, for those who were paying attention to this last election, so we know from, from votes and things that were turned in, that Hillary won the popular vote. Yet, Donald Trump is president. And so everybody's like, what, what was the disconnect? What was the, what, what, what happened? What, like, what was it? And it was like, well, it's the Electoral College. Oh, what's the Electoral College? Stay tuned. We're going to talk about the Electoral College. But I just found it interesting that, um, that was a unanimous decision that came down, um, in the faithless electors case. And so basically what happens is there were members of the electoral college who did not go with the popular vote. And you see how that can be a problem. You can see how that can be an issue because if we live in, in a democracy where we do have this ability to vote, right? This is, this is our voice. This is our weapon. It's like, Again, I mean, and I and, I, and I'm with y'all, <laughs> Lamar. You may be on to something. No, like it, it you definitely could be on to something, especially now with with this new decision. There were members and seats of the electoral college that were not casting their votes based on the interest of those who voted. And I and as I was saying, like I can empathize with some of y'all because it's kind of like, oh, my vote doesn't matter, and to an extent, it would seem that way. But no, we have to continue to show up to vote because a lot of these things are fixing themselves now. They are fixing that now there is calls for, for penalty now because the whole point of the Electoral College is to be a representative. You know what I'm saying? Like, OK, these people voted for this person in this state. And so the Electoral College says, yo, my people is riding with such and such. But. That wasn't the case. Um, so I, I was reading an article by the uh, the New York Times 
It says it ruled that the electoral college can keep working the way it had worked. It has worked for the last 200 years, which means it says the court agreed that states may replace and even punish faithless electors. Um, the curious term we use for the direct electors of the president who cast their ballots for a candidate other than their party's nominee. So good to me, y'all. Like, that's change. So that means to tell me that there were specific people in the Electoral College that were casting votes that were not based on what we casted in, in the booth, on the ballot. It's like, ah, no. So now... Now it says Supreme Court rule president. Yes, yes, that is it. Yes, that's that's the one. Thank you, thank y'all. Oh man, this production team is amazing, y'all. Check, that. yes, for real. Um, so yeah, like that. That's huge. That's even more reason now for us to arm ourselves and go to the polls, because now there is penalty for those faithless electors that is like, nah, this is who we want. No, again, this is we the people, y'all. This this is our vote. This is what matters. This is us being aware and going to the polls. And with that comes accountability. And it's happening. It's happening. And I and I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, my voice doesn't matter. It does. It does. I promise you it does. It does. I don't know how many ways I can say it. I don't know how to encourage you, so on and so forth. But your 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 voice matters. And the price that somebody paid for you to have their voice, it, it was extensive. It was expensive. Some people paid their lives for it. And so it it's only on us who are here now to be the people who use our voice when we go to, to the booths, when we are talking to people in the break room, when we're talking to people at Walmart when we encounter ignorance daily, because I know there are a lot of y'all that are watching this and it's just kind of like, you see it all the time. Like you encounter so much ignorance on a daily basis. But now we be the people, we are going to arm you with information. We are going to arm you with knowledge. And some of this may cha challenge your ideology. I don't care, whatever. We're going to talk about it though. And what you do with the information, yo, it's cool. It's up to you. What you do with your vote is up to you. There's no, I'm not going to tell you how to vote or who to vote for. We just going to pre present the information. We, we going to present it. We going to put it on paper. We going to put it down. And you are going to have the, the information. And it's our call to action. So just one more time recapping. There is a penalty. For, for those who are in the electoral college that are not representing us well. There, there's going, there, there is penalty that is going to get, yes, Hona, yes, we need to have this conversation. There is a penalty for those who don't represent us well when it comes to the electoral college. But we got to start representing ourselves well first. Again, we, we, we can't expect Washington and, you know, our state capitals to fix it. It starts with us. It starts with us being the person. And then from us being the person, we fix our households. And then we got more people. And then the community and the church you go to and the job you work at. And then from there, it spreads like wildfire. You will be surprised. You will be surprised. Every city is made up of people. And I know that's like, well, duh. But every, every, every city is made of people, people who live in houses and have families and communities. And so we are trying to reach those people. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I look forward to seeing y'all. And remember, we are the people. But remember, be the people. We'll see y'all next week at 7 on Tuesdays on Be The People. I love y'all.